going to tie my version of Lefty Craze Deceiver. And I'm starting off with a size 8 hook in the vise. And this is actually a bass bug hook. Um, I usually don't get too particular about the, the hooks that I use as long as it's in the standard kind of length and, uh, and size that I'm looking for. I've tied this in straight streamer hooks. I tie this in uh, saltwater, one-out saltwater hooks. Uh, the reason I'm tying it uh, in this bass bug hook is one, it's got a thinner or smaller gauge. Uh, so I think that helps with uh, with hookups, making it uh, easier to penetrate. And also I like the shape of this hook. It keeps uh, some of the feathers and the other fibers that we're going to tie in towards the back away from getting tangled up in the in the hook. But again, if you've got streamer hooks, you can use those as well. Um, the thread that I'm going to use is a 140, uh, and this is a yellow. I'm going to tie a yellow deceiver. So I'm just going to get it started about the midway point in the hook shank and work my way pretty quickly back down to uh, where the bend in the hook starts. Uh, and here, uh, just like when I tie my uh, Prince nymphs and things like that, I'm going to put a, a just a little ball in the back, and that does a couple of things. When I put the when I put the feathers uh, on or the hackle on, it's going to uh, help separate those. And then when I um, when I tie the rest in the front, it's going to act as kind of an anchor point so things don't pull off the back. So the, the next piece that I'm going to add is um, some saddle hackle. And again, I'm going to tie this in a yellow, so I'm going to use yellow uh, hackles for this. This is one of the toughest parts for me to kind of be all right with. Uh, when you take them off, and I just twist them off of the, twist them off of the, of the hide, they're not going to look real pretty. Uh, they're going to kind of go all over the place. Uh, and I had a real tough time with not having them lined up in a special way. Uh, but what happens once they get wet, everything kind of tapers off and streamlines. So uh, it, if you're like me, you're going to struggle with that at first. But again, when you, uh, when you get it in the water, it's going to all flatten out. So not too particular about lining, uh, lining them up. Just going to take it straight off of that. And I want this to be maybe uh, two times or so the length of, of the, uh, the hook shank. So I'm just going to find my point where I'm going to tie it in and I'll just clip that to an even amount you know, back up here so you can see and I'm just going to tie that in right on top of that that thread ball and again it's, it's going to look it's going to look rough uh, at first, but you're going to have to be alright with that. If you're really concerned, one trick that I saw, I think on Orvis, when they tied one of these up, just run it under hot water and you'll you'll convince yourself that everything lays out nice. Alright, so the next piece I'm going to add in here is some, uh, some additional flash. And I always try to match my crystal flash with the color uh, of, the, of the hackle that I use. So, um, I've got this yellowish hackle. I'm going to take maybe four strands or so and I'm going to tie them in on either side. So I'm just going to trim up the end here. I'll put a couple of wraps in on that side. And I'm going to trim it off to be the same length as the as the tail there. So I'll just do the same process to the other side. Rotate my vise. Get it wrapped in come back through and then trim off. The amount. Just make sure everything's in there nice and snug. Uh, and then the next piece of flash that I'm going to use is a flashaboo. So this is a, a flat flash material. And I'm going to do the same thing on either side. I'm going to take maybe maybe four pieces of this, clean off to make even sides, and tie that again right into the right into the side. These I'm going to trim to be maybe about uh, an inch longer than everything else, and it just gives it a nice effect when it's in the when it's in the water. So now I'll repeat that process on the other side. Rotate my vise. Come back through. 
can trim it off. Alright, so you can get an idea of what it's starting to look like. Uh, now I'm going to take, uh, and you can use again whatever you like, you can use uh, some of this uh, like tubing uh, material, or what I like to use is a braid, and this is a uh, rainbow braid. And I'm going to take a section of that off and tie that into the into the hook shank there and bring it down and then I'll work my work my thread to about the maybe the two-thirds mark or so uh, on the on the hook shank. Now this isn't a necessary step but what I like to do is just put a little piece of, a little dab of zappa gap on here and that just helps lock everything in place and when I wrap I'm just gonna wrap this right over top of that. You don't see much of this uh, braid come through so you can use whatever you want to cover the the hook shank one thing that I've done I've even used like a, like a crystal chenille or an astaz um, to cover it if you want to add what, what that will do this has a pretty small taper as you can see if you add some of that that flash material it's going to give it it's going to give it some additional bulk uh, so maybe if you want a bigger profile, you can tie some of that that material in. So again, it'll it'll look it'll look rough. You're not going to see that when we tie it in. All right. So now we're going to take some bucktail, and again to match everything, I've got yellow bucktail. Uh, I'm just going to take a section off here, and you'll start to get the feel of what's what's the right amount. <clears throat> based on the size hook you're tying, but this is maybe about uh, you know half a pencil width and diameter. I'm not going to clean it up. I'm just going to measure it against the side, and, and I want it to fall about maybe halfway uh, on the tail section, so I get an idea of where it's going to land. When I tie uh, like a clouser or something like that, I'll uh, taper my cut, but I want to have some volume in the head. Um, so I'm just going to do a do a straight cut, and I'm going to line that up, and I'm just going to tie that into the side. So just a couple of wraps on the side there, and I'll do the same thing to the other side. This time I'll measure it up against the one that I've already tied in and make a straight cut I'll rotate the vise and tie that in as well now I didn't really crank it down on here because what I'm going to do now is just kind of move that bucktail around the hook so that it covers it completely and then I can take my wraps back through and really start to really start to bear down on it. And if you get some of these fibers that shift up around the eye, now's a good time to clean that off. And I'll make sure that gets good and locked in there. All right, so now you can see it starts to to form that shape around around the hook. And again, that braid that you tied in early is earlier is pretty much pretty much disappeared. Okay, and now the last couple of steps here around the head I'm gonna add in a darker color and so for this I'm gonna use a chartreuse green and so I've got my bucktail here I'm gonna take off a section that is slightly thicker than what I tied in on on either side I'll 
trim that and I want this to be just a little bit longer than the than the yellow bucktail so I kinda got my measurement again I'm gonna make a straight cut on this to help add volume to help me build out this head and here then I'm just gonna tie this right on top and then I'm just gonna give one or two pushes to spread it out and now I'm just filling in some of those some of those gaps and making that head alright before I get too far into building this though I'm gonna add uh, one more piece of flash material and that's gonna be you know the gills or maybe an indication of blood you can use red I like to use this kind of salt water salt water pink so I'm going to take maybe five strands or so clip it <clears throat> and then I'm going to bend this around my thread and place it right on the bottom I'll rotate my vise and I'll tie that in and then I just hold it back and I'm going to trim it about the point point of the hook there alright and now I can finish this finish this off by building out the the head. <clears throat> and now I'll add some eyes to it and so you've got a couple of options here with with eyes as well um, you can use I'll show you two different kinds that I have these are um, more kind of realistic 3D eyes and then you've got some some holographic eyes here um, what I'm going to use is these uh, flatter ones and, and again a couple of options that you have here um, this, the stick really doesn't work that well and so you can tie those in. One one trick I learned is to tie them in with uh, just a, a thin diameter amount of filament. Uh, and when you put the head cement on, it's going to more or less disappear. Uh, kind of a cool cool trick. You can use zap a gap to get them to get them started. Um, I'm gonna uh, just stick them on to start, and then I'm gonna come back through with my with my head cement. I'm going to use Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails for this and coat coat that completely over be generous with it And I'm not too worried if some of this gets on my on my bucktail. It'll just lock everything, lock everything in place. And then I'll start to let that dry. And uh, the only other thing that you want to make sure that you do is, is clear the eye. It's a pretty thick, thick gap. Just want to make sure that you're able to pass your, your line through.
And there you have it. That's my take on Lefty's Deceiver. Again, when you get it in water, it's going to all taper down and uh, back out just a little bit here so that you can see the finished product. It'll all taper down and it'll look pretty slick when it's when it's working through the water.